All right, now I'm going to tell you a story. Very unusual story. It's a story with a chorus, which you will learn. But it only comes around once. It's a very unusual chorus. So I have to teach it to you. And the chorus goes, Sit down, George, you're rocking the boat. No, 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 no. Remember the picture that was up on the classroom wall? There's these, there's these 47 guys in a boat built for 12, and they're fending off icebergs and rocks with poles, and the water's coming in, and there's this guy standing up at the back looking heroic. What do you tell him? That's more like it. This is a true story from history. So... You think she knows all about history. You know all that stuff. You learned all that stuff back in school. What well, bookworms, they don't know nothing. And if you think they does, he's a fool. I'll tell you how it all happened. When me and George Washington saw how to cross the Delaware River and turn the tide of the war. It was coming up right around Christmas, the year 1776. <laughs> and us glorious Patriot Army we was on a terrible fix. We've been chased all the way down to Jersey and found ourselves, would you believe, across the Delaware River from Trenton which is no place to spend Christmas Eve. But we figured we'd have us a party, what with a long weekend and all. We'd get us some chips and a six pack, have us a regular ball. So we sent Colonel Knox to the Pathmark to pick up the pretzels and brew. But the Pathmark was closed, kind of Christmas. Says George, now what do we do? Charlie Lee says, did you try Philadelphia? Says George, you out of your head, nothing happens in Philly the rest of the year and Christmas is gonna be dead. We was all set to give up and watch football. When I gets me this brilliant idea, the Hessians is over in Trenton. They're German. They gotta have beer. <laughs> we all looked around at each other, made a mad dash to put on hats and coats, went charging out in the snow drifts, yelling, to Trenton, mad head for the boats. And the vision of imported brisky brought a smile to old George's face as he led us to Washington's crossing. But which seems an appropriate place. <laughs> we shoved off in these leaky old rowboats he rented for two dollars cash. <laughs> George was half in the bag when he started. He was a general. He had his own stash. He stood up like some freaking statue with his tricorn hat and blue coat shouting, Onward to Trenton and victory! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people in this boat. Well, it must have been zero dark 30 by the time we all got across. So George leased us eastbound to Trenton, which was south of us. <laughs> so we got lost. So he stops this all night Sunoco. Hey, which way to Trenton? How far? Oh, you hang it right at the 7-Eleven. Air traffic lights, there you are. <laughs> it was dawn when we got to the city. Rang the doorbell outside the wall, and whose face should appear at the peephole? The boss German himself, Colonel Rawl. Who's there at this hour of the morning? What are you guys doing here? Uh, we heard you was having a party, <laughs> and we thought we could borrow some beer. Rawl was not in the mood to be generous. He had a head just like a balloon. They'd been all getting pie-eyed on Pilsner since four o'clock last afternoon. <laughs> so he told us some bad, thing, bad things in German, and slammed the door in our face where we stood. <laughs> so we let's go with our cannon, figured to do his hangover some good. Well, Rawl gets together his troopers, at least Emsey can get out of bed, with one hand waving his saber and the other hand holding his head. And as for us, we'd been marching since, since nightfall till we was all weak in the knees and we hadn't seen booze since Thanksgiving and half of us had the DTs. So, oh, what a terrible battle. You know, what a pitiful sight. The Germans so tight they couldn't shoot straight, us so straight we couldn't shoot right. <laughs> So we filled all the fence posts with bullets, and we filled all the morning with smoke, and fired off cannon and musket till every last window in Trenton was broke. When suddenly, down from the courthouse, ah, oh guys, let's go to this big cheer. With heroic effort and battle, they'd seized the entire reserves of their beer. <laughs> and that put an end to the, rush, to the Hessians, and back to New York they went creeping, because <laughs> once you run out of brusque, there ain't nothing in Trenton worth keeping. <laughs> And that was the very beginning when the Germans all cried Das ist alles of the British reversal that ended in Yorktown with General Cornwallis. <laughs> and we threw us a bender that lasted well into some time next year floating up to our eyeballs and gallons of good German beer. And that's how it happened. <laughs>